Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei were the five children of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, and his wife, Alexandra Fyodorovna. The entire family was tragically wiped out by the Bolsheviks during the First World War after they were imprisoned for a little over a year. In this five-part series, we will reflect all of their lives separately each Wednesday. As we will look at them individually, I will rather uncover their personality and accomplishments rather than making these five videos a biography of them in order to prevent repeating myself as the siblings spent their entire life together. However, to make every part understandable for all viewers, there might be some repeating, which I will minimize as much as possible. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to mention that I now also have a Patreon site where you can further support my work if you like to do so. There will be a link in the description box. You will get exclusive behind the scenes footage, unposted material and much more. It was June 1899 and the members of the imperial family of Russia were all eagerly looking at Alexandra who was 9 months pregnant at that time. On June 26, 1899, the Tsarina gave birth to their next child, Maria, but disappointment was everywhere. The whole country was expecting Alexandra, who was already deeply unpopular in Russia, to finally give birth to a boy and heir. Nicholas's cousin wrote, And so there is no heir. The whole of Russia will be disappointed by this news. And Queen Victoria remarked, I regret the third girl for the country. I know that an heir would be more welcome than a girl. Alexander was devastated, but Nicholas assured her that he was happy to have another daughter and told her, I dare complain the least, having such happiness on earth, having a treasure like you, my beloved Alex, and already the three little cherubs. Maria grew up quite simply, and despite being a Grand Duchess and styled as Imperial Highness, the people at court just named her Maria, or with her patronym Maria Nikolaevna. Maybe some of you now might wonder what a patronym is, and why Maria and all of her siblings have a different one than for example their mother Alexandra, who was known as Alexandra Fyodorovna. A patronym is a part of the given name of one's child in Russia and many other countries, which is based on the given name of the father in most cases. All the girls have the patronym Nikolaevna based on their father's name, Nicholas. Depending on the gender, the patronym ended with Yevna, Ovna or Ikna for woman, and with Ovich, Evich and Ich for men. In her brother Alexei's case, it was Nikolaevich. For Alexandra, it was a little different. Her birth name was simply Alex of Hesse and Bahrain, but when she converted to Orthodoxy upon her marriage to Nicholas, she took on the Russian name Alexandra Fyodorovna. Alexandra was the name Nicholas wished for her to take on, and Fyodorovna was a common patron name for foreign brides who couldn't make their own based on their father's name. In Alexandra's case, her father was called Louis. Fyodorovna also translates to gift of God. Important to mention is that a patronym is not a surname. In Maria's case, her surname was Romanova, while the male members of the family were named Romanov. By her family, Maria was called by the French version of her name, Marie, or by the more Russian nicknames Masha or Mashka. Maria was especially close to her little sister, Anastasia, with whom she shared a room. They were known as Little Pair, while her older sisters, Olga and Tatiana, were known as the Big Pair. Together, the four sisters were known as Otma. Maria and Anastasia were often dressed similarly, and when Anastasia was causing trouble or playing pranks on the people at court, Maria was the one who would apologize for the behavior of her little sister. While especially Anastasia was extremely active, Maria was the quieter one out of her siblings. The young Grand Duchess dreamed of one day having a big family and was especially obsessed with soldiers. She would often look out of the palace window and watch the young soldiers outside guarding their home. On one occasion, she said, while once again watching the guards from her room, Oh, I love these dear soldiers. I should like to kiss them all. She envisioned herself one day even marrying a soldier, but she knew that this was highly unlikely to happen. 
When Maria was eleven, she fell in love with one of the young men, and she immediately received a letter from her mother telling her to hide her feelings as others might say unkind things about her crush. Maria was taller than average for her time and was as strong as her grandfather Alexander III. She was therefore nicknamed Fat Little Bow Wow by her sisters. According to some sources, she had as much strength that she could lift her tutors off the ground. The young Grand Duchess's beauty was widely known across Europe. Her cousin Louis Mountbatten fell deeply in love with Maria and kept a picture of her by his bedside until his death in 1979. She had big blue eyes, a charming smile, and rosy cheeks. Her hair was light brown with some golden lights in it. Another young man interested in Maria was Prince Carol of Romania. After already getting rejected by her older sister, Olga, Carol asked for Maria's hand in marriage on January 26, 1917. Nicholas declined as he thought that Maria was still too young and also Maria was not really keen on marrying Carol, who had a reputation as a playboy. However, this might have been the last opportunity for at least one of the girls to leave Russia before they were arrested roughly two months later. Maria was polite, kind and never got into trouble, hence her sisters referring to her as a stepsister because she was too good. When young Maria once stole some biscuits from her mother, Nicholas said, I'm relieved to see she is only a human child, as he was afraid that wings would grow on her for her angelic behavior. Her sisters would often take advantage of her, for example on one occasion she was persuaded by her older sister Olga to persuade their mother that Olga should get her own room and be handed down Alexandra's gowns. But like everybody, Maria also had some downsides. She could sometimes be stubborn, lazy, and grumpy and was not really interested in her schoolwork. In return, she was interested in drawing and sketching, which she always did with her left hand. When the First World War broke out, Maria's older sisters and her mother worked as nurses in a private hospital where they cared for the wounded soldiers. While Maria and Anastasia were too young to work as nurses, they would often just visit the soldiers and play checkers or billiards with them. During this time, the little pair also visited a nurse's school where they just helped with the children. The girls together with their mother would also sometimes visit their father and brother at the war headquarters at Mogliev. There, Maria fell deeply in love with one of the officers. When the revolution broke out in 1917, all of her siblings fell sick with measles. Maria was the last to fall ill, but she also developed pneumonia, of which she nearly died. Due to her poor health, she was not told that her father had abdicated the throne until she was feeling better. Following the abdication, the whole family was arrested and put under house arrest, firstly in Tsarskoye Selo and afterwards in Tobolsk. Maria at both places got friendly with the guards and talked with them about their families. In April 1918, Maria and her parents were moved to Yekaterinburg while the rest of her siblings remained at Tobolsk as Alexei was too sick to travel. Maria wrote letters back to her brother and sisters informing them that they were searched by the guards upon arriving and that a wooden fence was installed around the house. At Yekaterinburg, Maria also befriended some of the guards, showing them pictures in her album. For her friendliness, Maria was often rebuked by her mother. There are claims that one of the guards smuggled in a birthday cake on Maria's 19th birthday in 1918 and that they were later discovered in an intimate moment together, although this event is highly debated. The guard was then allegedly removed from his position and Maria's older sister Olga and her mother appeared angry with her for the next few days. During Maria's last hours, she was seen walking around in the gardens of the Patyev house in which they were imprisoned with her father and sisters. They were in good spirits and went to dinner later. Shortly before midnight, on July 16, 1918, the family was awoken and taken to the basement under the pretext that they had to be moved to another place. They were placed in a room together with their physician, servants and the lady-in-waiting, where they were left alone for around 30 minutes. 
Yakov Rurovsky, the chief executor, entered the room and read their death sentences before the guards opened the fire on the family. Maria tried to escape through the doors at the rear end of the room, but they were locked. She was hit by a bullet in her thigh and fell to the ground next to her sister Anastasia. All of the siblings survived the first hail of bullets, but the gunmen opened the second round of fire. Maria had to watch while her brother and older sisters got killed. What happened next is not entirely known. It is most likely that Maria was knocked unconscious and woke up while the bodies were being carried out. She started screaming and one of the executors struck her in the face until she was silent. To this day, the exact cause of Maria's death remains unknown. The bodies were not found for the next few decades, so there were several claims that Maria might have survived the execution. In 1991, the first bodies of the Romanov family were exhumed and it was soon clear that two bodies were missing. It was definitely Alexei's body which was missing and either Maria or Anastasia's, although this is not entirely clear till this day. One of the bodies was then buried in 1998 under the name Anastasia. In 2007, the remaining two bodies were found. As they claimed to have buried Anastasia back in 1998, the found bodies belonged to Alexei and most likely Maria. Their funeral was set to take place in 2015, but is still postponed to this day. Like her parents and siblings, also Maria was canonized as a passion bearer and a holy martyr by the Russian Orthodox Church and the Russian Orthodox Church abroad.